Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at number seven of animation and we're looking at jumping. So I thought I'd go a bit further than normal and do sort of jumping over an obstacle this time and uh, having some fun with that. Uh, I could have just done a sort of jump cycle, which is obviously common in games, but I thought I would push it that bit further. Uh, so there's about 10 minutes of time lapse of me giving some commentary and how that's gone. And at the end, uh, well, actually, there's a bit less than 10 minutes, about seven minutes of me time lapse. I'm at 2000% uh, this time because it was slow going. Uh, and then there's uh, lots of your work and a bit of review of that. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, so it was a tough one once again, but this was uh, a good fun one. I think I'm preferring the uh, body animation to facial animation. Uh, facial, anima um, facial animation seems to be more sort of methodical and uh, just kind of weirdly time consuming uh, rather than uh, artistic in some ways. But maybe that's because I haven't really got into the depths of it yet. Um, but I felt like I was getting into the depths of animation this time. Uh, and certainly having lots of fun uh, moving the character lots and uh, getting some real, um, I don't know, animation going, I suppose that's the word. Anyway, uh, so what I'm doing to start with is just blocking out. Uh, and I'm doing that, uh, so I saw, I've obviously been doing more research, and I'm just doing that because I saw someone do it uh, frame by frame. They'd literally just go through the poses one frame after the other, but I thought I'd leave a gap of 10 frames. So. Um, uh, frame 1, 10, 20, 30, and they just sort of go along the poses. Um, so keyframing major poses as I saw them. I did have a reference. It wasn't a particularly good reference, but it was just enough. I, I'm trying not to do too much reference uh, because in a sense you can just end up copying the movement, um, although that's still important. But I do want to go a bit away from that because, uh, like the superhero one later on, I don't want to just copy superhero movements, I want to make my own ones up. So um, when it, getting away from the references at times is important to me anyway, that's how I see it. And then going back to your reference and thinking where have I gone wrong, uh, that sort of thing, uh, is good learning curve. That's as I see it anyway. Um, so uh, I'm just going along and sort of uh, taking these at uh, every 10 frames, uh, finding a new position, and then I'm going to do the timing a bit later. And yes, I saw someone do that, and I thought actually that's a really good way. Now, I'll put the links in the description again, but they're the same sort of people that I've been looking at before. Uh, and uh, looking at the animator's survival guide, uh, links in the description for that as well. Uh, very useful. Um, I have to remind myself, even the run part at the beginning of this animation, I had to remind myself, where is the weight again? And without having to sort of get up and run across my room, uh, which there isn't much space in here for that, um, it, it's just much easier to sort of look at the reference and think, oh yeah, that's how it works. Uh, so having that around, and I, there's a lot to read in there as well, and I need to go through it again and read it again uh, because these things don't always go in, you, you're reminded of these things. So even watching tutorials a couple of times is quite important um, if you're sort of forgetting them uh, and to remind yourselves of these things. And that's why it's very handy when a tutorial person goes through the beginner stages again and you think, oh yeah, there's that shortcut, I forgot about that. Uh, so I, I'll try and do that more, I think, <laughs> as I'm watching lots of tutorials. Uh, so. Uh, there's uh, th that blocking out stage took a long time. I think the whole thing took me what was it three hours or something in the end? No, it was a, it was more like five actually, you know, with with breaks and everything included. Uh, so about four, three and a half to four hours raw recording time. Uh, but I, I find I can only work for about half an hour before I need a bit of a rest, five minutes or so, uh, and even do a bit of exercise actually quite quite helpful in those scenarios I find a bit of stretching and things. Uh, move away from the computer. Uh, it, you'd be surprised, it really helps you think. A uh, bit of exercise in the middle of these things and it keeps you fit and healthy, so that's uh, well worth doing, I think. So I'm still going with the blocking out, and this is me at 2000%, like I say. Uh, so uh, what I've found very useful was the motion curves, the motion paths, are they called? Yes, motion paths. Uh, I was gonna say motion curves, <laughs> but they're motion paths. I probably went off the green screen for a moment there. Uh, but uh, very useful, but a bit laggy in 2.8. I don't know whether they're, <coughs> excuse me, that's something that's just laggy anyway. Um, and it, maybe it takes a lot of processing power, but I hadn't noticed that before in 2.79. Um, but then I'm fairly new to animation, fairly new. Um, so uh, I, I think it's just a 2.8 uh, slight glitch, unfortunately. 
Um, so I had to um, click on one bone uh, and the root bone, uh, not the root bone, but the hips bone seemed the obvious one to sort of see the motion um, of that jump. And then uh, I'd sort of see the motion, adapt it really slightly and then just uh, uh, get rid of them by pressing the little cross at the end and then carry on animating other bits. Uh, but you can see me going over and over and over again uh, looking at this jump trying to get it right. Still isn't quite there and um, I kind of ran out of time. I didn't want to spend absolutely hours but I feel like I am getting better um, at improving the animations. That sounds strange but um, there's that sort of blocking out phase which everything looks okay-ish and then there's sort of fiddling with the curves or splining as they say and getting the timings. Um, actually it's timings first then splining so I think. Uh, and uh, I feel like I'm understanding that phase more um, and hopefully I'll get to the more sort of detailed phase uh, maybe I'll get more time to do those sort of details like it would have been nice to have that sort of delay with the hand movement and the feet as well as they move through and, and just little things like that that give the character real character in my opinion anyway uh, and uh, I feel like I'm not really uh, doing these uh, animations justice just yet uh, because there's lots lots further I could go um, but that's not the point the point is a learning experience rather than make your animations look cool so try and remember that when you're doing them as well uh, I'm also getting used to uh, copying uh, the keyframes and flipping them uh, so the hand was uh, clenched uh, on one side and I could just copy all those keyframes uh, control C and control shift V uh, to the other side. You've got to make sure uh, that you've got obviously just those bones selected and then just the opposite bones selected when you copy and paste them. But also don't have anything hidden in the graph editor. That's what I found. I, uh, if it's hidden it doesn't select it which does make sense but uh, so one sort of finger <laughs> might be sticking out or something like that and I'd be thinking why is that happening. It's usually because there's uh, as a curve hidden in the graph layer, or in the graph, in the graph editor, or something like that. So do watch out for those um, sort of things that will catch you out. Uh, I've said about the lagginess. Uh, oh, then there we go <laughs> to the end. Uh, good timing there. Uh, I'm, like I say, I'm pleased with it. It's okay, but a long way to go still. So here's some of your work. Uh, very impressive work coming out now. Uh, I don't know whether uh, people are just getting loads better. Uh, but it's looking good. This one, very impressive. I like the ideas that are coming out as I well. This is obviously loving is the category, so I'm sort of a, a stage ahead. Uh, some of them I have like sound you. as well, so I'll try not to speak too loudly over the top of these. Uh, but some great ideas. Uh, fantastic one there again um, from... Oh, I've forgotten the names. <laughs> this one's brilliant. I love you. I'm just going to be quiet for this one. I know. That must have taken hours, so really well done. That was uh, Lord Diego, I think, was it? Um, I'd, I'd put your names on the actual um, animation, because if it's at the end, then I'm likely to cut it out by not recording it in time and things. So put your name somewhere on the screen if you can. That'd be really helpful. Um, uh, 3D, 3D Wevra, uh, this one is. <laughs> there we go, because they put their name up. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so some really fantastic ideas. Um, this one. Uh, Easter egg one uh, from Mark Herman. Thank you, Mark, for putting your name on. I love you, Easter Bunny. I'm trying not to talk over the sound too much uh, because I'm aware it's not playing through my speakers, so I'm, but I know there's sound there. Uh, this one looks slightly creepy uh, in a weird way, uh, but very impressive. It's not easy to hold something, and there's actually techniques for like holding swords and stuff um, where you sort of uh, put a constraint on it and you. Um, power that constraint, uh, but yeah, it's well worth looking up that. Another one where someone's holding, or the robot is holding the uh, cuddly toy. Very, very tough to get any sort of uh, weight behind the toy, and uh, they have sort of green objects and they um, act as when they're holding things to try and give that weight uh, and the impression of weight. Uh, so very tough. Uh, people really going for it with some of these animations. Very impressive. Uh, I can't wait to see what you will do when it comes to things like the superhero ones and stuff. I. I know this is uh, love, but I just wanted to show that one because it was absolutely brilliant. I thought it was fantastic. A, a running one in there with the sort of um, paper flapping up and down. That was a brilliant one as well. I'm loving some of the ideas that are coming out here. Uh, just brilliant. Uh, do try and uh, loop your animation if you've got enough room. 
Uh, this was a really nice bounce one, so I thought I'd put that one in. Uh, I think that's a CG cookie um, ball or something, so uh, they've been using their CG cookie mem membership there. Uh, nice work. And I like the eyes on this one at the end, the flutter. Very clever. And this this is a cool little walk side. Look at that. It's really, really great. Uh, really nice character and great fun. I think that is the last one. Yep, so we're back to me again doing the jump. Uh, so I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, if you're still with me, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking part. And um, I'm certainly learning a lot, and I hope you are too. So happy animating, and I will see you next time.